Hello, I'm George Teasdale with Engineered Air Balance. Today we're going to be covering the procedures and demonstrating the pitot tube traverse for a square or rectangular duct. Okay, so let's discuss the pitot tube. Here at the tip we have what's measuring the total pressure and this, this is the end that gets placed directly in the airstream. And the pitot tube uh, is con constructed with a tube inside of a tube such that the radial holes on, on the outer tube here are going to measure the static pressure. And so the total pressure, as we mentioned a second ago, runs through the inner tube uh, along this, along the pitot tube, and then the radial holes measure the static pressure again on the outside of the inner tube. Okay, so this end of the pitot tube, we again have our cutaway where the uh, inner tube here is the total pressure tube and it is connected to this, this port here at the end and at this port this is uh, typically connected to the high side of the manometer. This radial uh, outer tube cutaway, um, again the outer tube, it, it runs to, to this port and this is typically connected to the low side of the manometer. Shown here are the different instruments that we're going to need to perform a pitot tube traverse. Featured here are multiple manometers from different manufacturers. We're also going to need pitot tube, a tape measure which will aid in measuring uh, the grid locations for the pitot tube and of course the ductwork itself. Okay, let's talk about velocity profiles in ductwork. Rarely is a velocity profile uniform in the ductwork. Typically, as the airflow flows through the ductwork, it is higher velocity in the center and lower velocity at the edges due to friction. There's quite a few things that can change the characteristics of the velocity profile. Uh, this typically includes duct transitions, elbows, and proximity to fan inlets and discharge effects. So there's several important rules when picking a location for conducting a traverse. First of all, in order to maintain a location that's going to contain the best chances for uniform flow, a traverse plane should be located as far away from an upstream disturbance as possible, and ideally at least one diameter downstream from, an up, from a disturbance. A traverse plane is also suitable for flow measurements if the average velocity is greater than 1,000 feet a minute and no velocity pressure is negative or zero. Take traverse measurements at actual conditions in actual cubic feet per minute. If the traverse location occurs at a location that is not standard air conditions, a velocity correction may be required. When picking a location for traverses, ensure that the duct size does not change in that traversed section. Face the pitot tube into the airstream and parallel to the ductwork at each measurement point and measure the velocity pressure. Convert velocity pressure to feet per minute velocity before averaging if the traverse is taken at other than standard conditions. Based on recent ASHRAE research and our experiences, we recommend log Chebyshev, or also known as log T, for rectangular ducts and square ducts, and the log linear method for round ducts. Shown here is the log Chebyshev chart, and we utilize this chart to determine the number of traverse locations by first measuring the sides of the ductwork and comparing that with the number of required points and lines as well as the factors on the chart. For example, if we had a 14 by 14 rectangular duct, we would look at the top line which indicates a minimum of three points with factors of 0 .064, 0 .50, and 0.936. Each of these factors must be multiplied by the side of the ductwork measurement to determine the proper location to mark or drill for the traverse. Today for this real world example, we have chosen to perform a pitot tube traverse on a 14 by 14 inch non-insulated duct. We have decided also to perform a five point traverse instead of a three point. It is a technician's discretion to increase the number of points for the traverse if they see that it may be required. The first measurement that's required when looking at the log Chebyshev chart indicates a factor of 0.074 multiplied by the duct side measurement of 14 inches and that gives a result of one inch, which gets marked on the pitot tube.
The second point and factor is 0.288, which gets multiplied by 14 inches, and that results in a 4 inch mark on the pitot tube. Next, the factor is 0 0.50 multiplied by 14 inches, and that results in 7 inches that gets marked on the pitot tube. Next is a factor of 0 0.712, which gets again multiplied by 14 inches and results in 10 inches on the pitot tube. And finally, our last factor of 0.926 multiplied by 14 inches gives us a measurement of 13 inches on the pitot tube. One quick note here, if this ductwork was internally lined with insulation, the measurements would have to be adjusted to accommodate that internal insulation. For our next step, we're going to be prepping their ductwork just like we did with our pitot tube, so that it can accept the pitot tube for our traverse. So just like we utilized the log Chebyshev chart and grid to mark our pitot tube, we're going to be doing the same thing here with our ductwork. This is a 14 by 14, as we previously mentioned. So it just so happens and turns out that the same markings we had on our pitot tube are going to be marked here on our ductwork. And just for quick reference, we had a one inch hole, a four inch hole, seven inch, 10 inch, and 13 inch markings for our 3 8 inch holes. So our next step is going to be utilizing the pitot tube and hooking up with the manometer. Okay, now we are going to connect our manometer to our pitot tube. Again, the manometer uh, is utilized here to accept the pressure from the, the, the total pressure port of the pitot tube and the static pressure port of the pitot tube. So let's go ahead and hook that up. We take our hose and ensure that we are nice and snug on our port here. And this, is our to this becomes now our total pressure tube. And we'll ensure that it is hooked up to the positive side of our manometer. Next, we'll take this hose and connect it to our static pressure port of our pitot tube and ensure that it goes onto the low port of the manometer. And I want to stress here that the manometer is essentially taking a differential pressure between the total and the static. The velocity pressure is the result of that differential pressure, and the velocity pressure is the total pressure minus the static pressure. So our next step, now that we have everything connected, is to utilize the previously drilled holes and our markings on our pitot tube to actually begin taking our readings in the grid pattern that we've established. Here we can visually demonstrate the location of the pitot tube inside of a duct when performing a pitot tube traverse. We can visually see that the pitot tube must be oriented into the airstream. It must be perpendicular to the airstream in a cross-sectional plane. We do not want to see the pitot tube at an incorrect angle since that will produce erroneous readings and provide unacceptable data. It's also important that the pitot tube be gridded off and measurements taken in a consistent manner. For the purposes of this demonstration, we will proceed with a top-down, left-to-right grid pattern, which is recommended for consistency to produce repeat results. So the first marking to start in our consistent pattern of going top-down and left-to-right begins with point number one, and then point number two, point number three, point number four, and point number five. Now for the second time, we are going to quickly speed through the remaining measurements. After we finish our final measurement, we then can take our static pressure measurement. Every time a pitot tube traverse is performed, it is always required to take a static pressure measurement. And to do that, we utilize static pressure 
port on our pitot tube, which requires us to remove the hose that is connected to the total pressure port. And with the hose connected to just the static pressure port on the pitot tube, we record our manometer reading at this point. Okay, now that we have finished our pitot tube traverse, we need to ensure that every single velocity pressure is then converted into a velocity. That calculation is the square root of that velocity pressure times 4005. This velocity then is calculated for each individual velocity point that was measured in the duct. Next, we'll take our average velocity and multiply it times the area of the ductwork. Since this was a 14 by 14 duct, the area calculation is length times width, which comes out to 1.36 square feet. We then take our average velocity of 1480 times 1 1.36, and that produces 2015 cubic feet per minute. Thank you for joining us at the Engineer Air Balance Training Facility, and thank you for watching this video on demonstrating the procedures for a pitot tube traverse. If you've liked this video, please be sure to subscribe to our channel. And if you'd like more information on our training facility or training materials, please contact training at eabcoinc.com.